This video shows you how to enter system data and select equipment in RHVAC. In this project, we've already entered general project data, default room data, and room data. Click the System Data button in the toolbar to open the System Data window. We only have one system in this project. Let's enter Main for the system name. We can leave the indoor temperatures at their default values of 70 and 75, which are the recommended values for Manual J. Since we're not installing any humidification equipment for the winter, we can ignore the winter relative humidity input. This project is not in a particularly dry or unusually moist area, so we can leave the relative humidity for summer at 50%. If you are in a very dry or very moist area, the third column in the drop-down help for the recommended summer indoor relative humidity for your location will say yes for either the 45 or 55% relative humidity row. We'll be using a natural gas furnace for the heating system of this house, so the leaving coil to room delta T input should be about 70 degrees. With a winter indoor temperature of 70 degrees, that makes the air leaving the heat exchanger about 140 degrees. For the cooling side, a typical coil to room delta T is 20 degrees. With a 75 degree summer indoor temperature, that makes the leaving coil condition 55 degrees. There are four options for the method to use to specify infiltration. The most common method is Manual J Air Changes Per Hour method. This house has four exposures and is single story, so we can leave the exposures option as it is. This project's building has an area under 900 square feet, so 900 or less is the column we should select. And we'll select the average construction tightness row so click the 0.61 option. There is a fireplace, so we need to specify its construction tightness as well. Select the average row value, which is 20 CFM. There is one fireplace, so select the one row. Let's take a quick look at the other methods of specifying infiltration. Select the blower door method option. You may select to use either single point or multi point for the blower door data that you want to enter. If a blower door test was done on the house, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should select the blower door method. If the blower door equipment provides you with a natural, no pressure air changes per hour of infiltration, then you should select the direct air changes per hour option. Or it may be that your blower door test equipment gives you a natural state CFM of infiltration. If that's the case, then select the direct CFM option. But we want to use the air changes per hour table from Manual J after all, so select the Manual J option. Notice that the checkbox at the bottom is checked, which means that when we click OK, whatever options we chose for winter will also be used to determine the infiltration rate for the summer. The value for summer will be different though, since the air changes per hour table values are different for summer. Click OK to save and apply our settings and close the dialog. Notice that the summer infiltration rate has been updated as well. The same option for square feet of the building and construction tightness has been selected. The air changes per hour rate is smaller for summer since a lower wind speed was assumed for the summer table values, 7.5 miles per hour instead of 15. Ventilation is outside air that is mechanically mixed with the return air before reaching the coil. The System 1 ventilation rate dialog lets you specify an amount of ventilation that is based on the ASHRAE 62.2 methodology. Notice this very important note. You should only enter the amount of ventilation that will actually be installed. If the house will not have mechanical ventilation, then leave the value at zero. The Infiltration Credit tab lets you specify some infiltration information to use if you entered yes for the Provide Infiltration Credit input on the General tab. 
If you are going to use this dialog to determine the amount of ventilation, you may click the Insert Winter and Insert Summer buttons to copy the result to the ventilation rate inputs at the bottom of this dialog. But since we don't want to use mechanical ventilation in this project, click Cancel to discard our changes and close this dialog. If continuous exhaust will be installed, enter the CFM here. You can ignore bathroom and kitchen exhaust fans that only run a few minutes at a time. Remember that during calculations, any ventilation and exhaust you've entered will affect the infiltration rate. If a heat recovery device will be installed in order to reduce the loads due to ventilation, select Yes, then enter the Sensible Effectiveness rating of the equipment. If the ratings for the cooling equipment to be installed in this system do not include an adjustment for blower heat, enter the input wattage of the blower here. Note that residential units usually do include an allowance for blower heat, so this input is usually left at zero. If the project has any radiant floors, radiators, etc., and the distribution piping for that equipment runs through any unconditioned spaces or is exposed to the outdoor air, this window is where you would need to enter information about the distribution piping. The heat lost through that piping needs to be accounted for as a loss on the equipment. If there are any supply or return side cooling loads that are not specific to any one particular room, you can account for them in the miscellaneous supply and return sensible and latent gain inputs. Negative values are also permitted here in case you need to account for any equipment that produces negative cooling loads. If a hot and chilled water system is to be used for this project, RHVAC can calculate the required water flow rate through the heating and cooling coils if it knows what the expected temperature difference, delta T, of the water entering and leaving the coil is. The calculated water flow rates are shown on the miscellaneous report. If winter humidification were to be done in this system, and the humidification device did not include its own source of heat, you would select Yes here so the program would include an additional heat loss due to humidification. But for this project, we'll leave it set to No. Setting the system air type to Fixed makes it so you can enter your own system CFM in the input below. You should do that after having seen what the loads and CFM requirements are and after you have selected the HVAC equipment. Since we haven't gotten that far yet, we'll set it back to Auto. The percent sensible capacity input is used in calculating what the program calls recommended tonnage. But since the percent of a unit's capacity that is sensible depends on many factors, it's better to select equipment based on the system's sensible and latent gain values and other parameters and look up the published manufacturer's performance data for the specific equipment you have in mind. The radiator inputs are used when you have baseboard radiators or other radiator equipment and you need the program to tell you how many feet or how many units you will need to meet the heating load. The required number of feet of radiator is shown in the Heating Rad Len column of the Room Load Summary Report. The System 1 Duct Load Factors dialog lets you enter data about the gains and losses due to duct work. Let's leave the first four rows of inputs at their default values since they happen to be right for the current system. Entering the duct surface area is not quite as simple as the first four rows of inputs. If you're using the Graphic Manual D Duct Size component to draw your ducts on the drawing board window, what you need to do is simple. Just select MDD for the update surface area from TMDD inputs. Or, if you are defining your ducts with the tabular manual deduct size window, then enter TMDD here. The exact surface areas from the duct sizing calculations will be used. If you're entering your own total duct surface areas, the most accurate way to determine them is to hand calculate the surface areas using formulas provided in the help. We will now press F1 to open the RHVC9 help window. Here are the formulas to use if you're going to calculate your own total duct surface areas for the system.
Another option is to use the duct surface area calculator to get a very crude estimate of the surface area based on the floor area of the system. Click the link to open the dialog. Let's enter 1 for the number of returns. Since this estimate is very simple and obviously might not be very accurate for some jobs, it's better to use one of the other three methods of finding the surface area if possible. Hand calculate, MDD, or TMDD. Click OK to accept this dialog's results and close the window. It's not necessary to click the refresh button for the data on this dialog to be applied to the system. All you have to do is click OK. But if you want to see the results before you close this dialog, click the refresh button. Here we can see that the duct loads are going to be between 10 and 17 percent of the total load on the system. This dialog lets you enter up to five different types of unconditioned environments called scenarios in which the duct work will be installed. For example, if some ducts are in a crawl space and others are in the attic, you would need to fill in data for two scenarios. In this example, our ducts are all in the attic, so we'll only need to use scenario one. Click OK to apply our changes and close the dialog. If the system were not being heated by duct work, such as with radiators or a radiant floor, you could set the heating duct loads input to no to prevent there being any sensible loss due to duct work. Normally, when you put rooms in a system in more than one zone, the program uses the peak fenestration gain procedure to calculate higher cooling loads and supply CFM requirements at the room and zone levels. But if you were not using a VAV system and still wanted to put the rooms in this system in more than one zone because you just wanted to see calculated results at the zone level, you could set the use constant volume if multi-zone input to yes in order to base the loads at the room and zone levels on the average load procedure. The airflow option input lets you determine whether the airflow values assigned to rooms and zones in this system will be based on the airflow that is larger for the system, heating or cooling, or the airflow that is larger for that room or zone. The normal value for a constant volume system is SIS. The system is isolated input lets you specify that the rooms in this system are isolated from the rest of the systems in this project. This is not common. The program will then isolate the rooms in this system from the rest of the house when doing certain calculations related to space volume and infiltration. Click the Equipment tab to select heating and cooling equipment for this system. Let's leave the heating type as natural gas furnace. Click Select Heating Equipment to open the Find HVAC Equipment window. Since this project has small loads, the max capacity values have been set too low to include any units in the search. The min and max capacity inputs are filled in based on the current set of multipliers, which can be changed by clicking the Multipliers button. Click the All Zeros button to set all the min and max values to zero. Now click Find Now to generate a new search. Double click a furnace to copy its data back to the system data window. Now click the cooling tab so we can select the cooling equipment. The model type of standard air conditioner is what we want, so click the select cooling equipment button. Double click an air conditioner in the list to copy its data back to the system data window. Now that we've selected an air conditioner, we can get its certificate. This message box explains that the AHRI reference number for the selected air conditioner will be copied to the clipboard to make it easier to search for that unit. The system's default web browser has opened to the page at ahridirectory.org where we can search for equipment. Paste the AHRI reference number from the clipboard into this box.
Here's the AHRI certificate for our selected air conditioner. Thanks for watching.